hello welcome back to my channel please subscribe to my channel for more the world update so the last update about once there was a king the king finally regained his memory and sent grandma to prison let's continue the king apologized to Gayatri's mother she says it was a bad time and it is passed away the king thanks her then comes to thanks Lacan for saving Gayatri's life the king says that he can never pay what Lacan has done and he can ask whatever he wants from the treasure of the armor court. Lacan looks at Swana, then says that he wants to ask for one thing only. They must celebrate the arrival of the baby to be born, and they must celebrate it well. The king announced that they will welcome the happiness of the palace, and tonight will be the celebration of Swana's baby shower. Gayatri asks Lacan that what is he doing? Lacan says that he cannot see Swana upset. He wants her to smile at least. Swana leaves the all in the jail. The prince says that he has dreamt about a lot of things to get and he accused grandma that he is destroyed and he has lost all his respect and then his son and now only his life is left. Grandma says that this game cannot end until she is alive. There is still hope. The prince asks which hope. Grandma says Carl, whose body has gunpowder instead of blood. The prince asks if he would help them. Grandma says that he is the root of the problem and she tells the prince that a few years ago she went into the forest and watched a wild young boy of 12 years who had prey and ate lion. Grandma recalls calling him towards herself. She had called him towards herself and asked who is he and who killed the lion. He says the hunger did. He killed it. Grandma tells the boy that she can give him a new life but she would have the right over his life. He introduced himself as Carl. Grandma says that Carl is their last hope. The prince says that first, Grandma brought Abdesh, then Rageshwari, and now Kal. This rented man cannot do any harm to the king. She must keep him away from her planning. It is better for them to walk along with the king. Swana tells Gayatri that she cannot celebrate anymore. The prince and Kokila want this child as a source to get to the throne. She cannot celebrate about it. She wants to tell the king. Gayatri says that they will tell the king about it, but not today. He has gone through a big storm today. For once, she must allow the resident of this palace to celebrate. She assures that it is her responsibility to get her and Lacan together. The king comes inside excited. When he leaves, Swana tells Gayatri that she was right. This truth must wait for the right time. In the function, the prince and Kokila blesses Swana and gives her a gift. Everyone else does too. The king and Gayatri brings her a gold idol. Swana gets to the king's feet. The king says that she is his sister's and sister's doesn't touch feet. He couldn't save Laksharaj, but he would always protect her child. Gayatri and the king's mother dance together in the celebration. Gayatri drags the king as well. Lakan watches Swana and wipes his tears. Then he leaves the hall. Swana goes behind him. She comes to Lakan and keeps a hand on his shoulder. He wipes his tears and says these tears. He doesn't know why they don't have to spill in the times of happiness. He wants to stay happy. But he is so helpless that he cannot give his child his name as well. So Anna asks him crying. The king comes there and slaps Lacan. He asks how dare he and he goes to grab Lacan's collar, beating him again. So Anna gets to his feet while the king kicked Lacan. So Anna says that if he kills Lacan, a child will always lose his father before birth. The king was shocked to hear this. Lacan stands up by then. The prince shouted at Swana to shut up, else he will. Swana asks if he will kill her, then he should go on. It is easier for her to die telling the truth than to live with a lie. The king asks what is happening here. Swana tells the king all about Laksharaj's reality, how they had kept her in torture, and the prince and Kokila's hatred, a love for Lakan. The king asks if there was such injustice with a girl in his presence. The king's mother and Gayatri were also upset. Kokila accused Swana to be shameless. The king shouted at her to stop it. She has forgotten her limit. If he does today, then his sword will decide about them. The prince says that he also has a sword. He cannot talk to his wife like this. The prince says that this is their household matter and he has no right to interfere and drag Swana towards himself. The king says that domestic violence is not household matter. It is a social responsibility. A woman is a mother, a daughter, a wife, a sister, but not a property. He asked the prince to leave Swana's hand, else his hand would have to leave his body. The prince loses the grip of Swana's hand. Gayatri says when a girl is married, the parent-in-laws become a parent. 
But if parents have to be this way, then it is better to be an orphan. Women there gossip about the prince having fallen their eyes. Swana so forgives the prince. Lakan says to the king that he loves Swana and her child to be, and he wants their responsibility. The king says that this is not possible. He cannot give Lakan the responsibility of Swana before they are married. They all smile. The king puts Swana's hand into Lakan's hand. The prince asks the king what he is doing. Swana is their daughter in law. The king says that she was, but now he has lost all the rights over her, just the way he lost the right to live. It is because of Swana that he is alive. He has already lost his respect now, so it must not compel him to lose his behavior. The prince lives courtly. Swana joins her aunt to the king, and then Lakan and Swana bends to touch his feet. The king asks if she doesn't remember what he had said. They take the blessings of the king's mother. The king knocks at Gayatri. Gayatri comes to the room looking for the king. She finds a rose on the bed with a note. She finds a series of notes pointing direction and discovers them in the rooms. She comes to a bed setting decorated with roses. The king spots Gayatri. He comes behind her. She is shocked to see him in Doti and laughs. She asks what is this. The king speaks in Savitri's way. She says all this is not necessary. The king kneels down and asks what can this slave do for you. Gayatri orders the slave to shut his eyes and kisses his forehead. The king shut her eyes and kisses her too. The prince comes to grandma in the jail. He says the water has gone about the earth. Grandma asks him to drown. The prince gets to her feet and apologizes. The prince tells her that the king insulted him in front of the whole armor court. He wants to marry Swana to Lakan. Grandma tells him that the king showed him his place. The prince says that he cannot live peacefully until the king and Gayatri are alive. He will not leave them alive no matter what. They have to call Kal and Mahakal. Grandma gives him a ring and asks him to show it to Kal. He would understand that she called him. Kal will end the king and Gayatri's era. Gayatri was getting ready. The king comes there and smiles towards her. He corrected his beard. He tells her English photographer has come to photograph them. The preparation is necessary. Gayatri poses with him in the mirror. Grandma plays with Cole. She marks a cross over the king and Gayatri's names. Swana tells Lakan that there is no black magic. Lakan asks how a picture gets locked in the black light box then. He is afraid of photography. Swana assures him that their photograph will be the best. The king's mother comes to the room and watches the king and Gayatri doing romance with each other. She clears her throat. The king and Gayatri both explain. The king mother asks them to hurry up. The photographer is waiting for them. There was the marriage ceremony of Lakan and Swana. Gayatri makes him a brother. He assures to be with her always. Kokila put on to Merrick over Swana. The prince pants in a deserted area. The king asks Lakan while Gayatri asks Swana. Both the king and Gayatri move towards each other. Gayatri fell in his arms. The king mother was happy to see them together. Gayatri was worried about the people around. The king put on to Merrick over her face. She leaves mischievously, putting the rest over his own. He runs behind her to rub his face with us. The both of them smile. The prince walks deep in the forest. He pants, saying that he would turn to Carl in search of this Carl. Gayatri and the king ask Swana to look at each other, else they will get to see each other just after marriage. When they leave, the king asks Gayatri to think about the name of their baby to be. Gayatri shies and asks how he knows about it. He tells her that he has a gut feeling that it will be a daughter. The king says that she will be just like her, beautiful and full of morals. He holds her in his arms and throws Gayatri, saying that he would hold his daughter like this. The king's mother comes there. The king kisses Gayatri down, who runs away. The king tells the king's mother that his daughter will be beautiful, but less than her grandmother, and leaves after kissing the king's mother's forehead. The king's mother prays for the happiness of the palace. The prince reaches a spot where he saw few people standing in the circle around a long haired man who swirls around knives tied to chain in his hand. He wonders what this animal like human is doing. Thank you for watching my video. Please don't forget to like my video and share it. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you.